The Bayesian approach to assessing probability is one of the most important underlying paradigms of medical diagnosis and therefore of diagnostic decision support tools. In this lecture, I will first describe the diagnostic process and how it works. I'll then look at how Bayesian probability is related to this process. I'll examine in some detail how the input components of pretest probability and test accuracy are obtained, and finally, look at how Bayes' theorem is used to calculate the output component of post-test probability. Throughout, I will focus on concepts more than mathematical calculations, but it's important to be aware of the mathematical basis of Bayes' theorem, since it underlies the application to computer-based diagnosis. Because of my background in laboratory medicine, I'll also focus on the use of laboratory tests in medical diagnosis and Bayesian probability. However, the concepts are more widely applicable, and you're encouraged to refer to the textbooks at the end of this lecture for additional examples. The goal of any diagnostic process is to classify a patient by group. This might be a control group that consists of healthy animals or people, or it might be an out-of-control group that consists of ill patients having a particular disease. Obviously, we want to further classify ill patients into more specific disease groups, such as the liver disease group or the kidney disease group, and even into more specific disease groups based on underlying etiology. We classify patients into disease groups so we can then select the appropriate treatment strategy. The first step in classifying a patient or making a diagnosis is assessing early clues, which include the signalment, such as patient age and sex, history, and clinical signs or symptoms, such as the cyanosis or bluish discoloration you can see in this cat's mucous membranes. Clinical signs are assessed during the physical examination. These early clues are used to develop an initial list of possible explanations or differential diagnoses, which can also be considered as hypotheses. These possible explanations are usually listed in order of their likelihood or probability. For example, methemoglobinemia is the primary differential diagnosis for a cyanotic cat, followed by cardiac and pulmonary disease. Laboratory and other diagnostic tests are then done to elicit new information that will help us differentiate among the possible explanations. The new information will support or refute our differential diagnoses and lead us to revise or reorder the list of possible explanations. Laboratory tests for methemoglobin and Heinz bodies in this cat yielded positive results, supporting our hypothesis of methemoglobinemia as the most likely or probable diagnosis. The process of performing diagnostic tests to obtain more information and further revising the list of possible explanations based on that information is repeated until the probability of a particular test is high enough that you're willing to go with it, or when treatment will not change with further information. This diagnostic test process is called the hypothetical deductive approach to medical diagnosis in which diagnostic tests are used to test an initial hypothesis and the results are used to deduce the likely diagnosis using diagnostic reasoning or inference. We can see that the process of making a diagnosis is one that involves weighing probabilities. Probability is the paradigm used most often to express uncertainty in medical diagnosis. Assessing probabilities involves both qualitative and quantitative processes, both of which we'll talk about. Bayes' theorem is derived from the properties of probability. Because it's a mathematical theory, it can be used to apply quantitative reasoning to the diagnostic process and therefore has widespread application in computer-based decision support tools. Let's look more closely at Bayes' theorem and how it is used to assess probability in the diagnostic process. Mathematically, probability is expressed as p and is represented on a scale ranging from 0 to 1, in which 0 indicates 0% or no probability of an event occurring, and 1 indicates 100% or certain probability of an event occurring. The sum of possible events adds up to 1. For example, in a coin toss, there are two possible events, A, heads, and B, tails. Each of these events is assumed to be independent, so each has a 50% probability of occurring. Bayes' theorem is based on an assumption of conditional probability, in which the probability of one event, A, depends on whether another event, B, has occurred or is present. Consider the example of a patient who presents with a swollen leg. There are many possible explanations for a swollen leg, including a blood clot. The probability that a blood clot is causing the swollen leg in this patient 
depends on the prevalence of blood clots in the larger population of patients that present with a swollen leg. Bayes' theorem uses conditional probability to incorporate new information into the diagnostic process. It allows us to answer the question, what is the probability, P, of a particular disease, D, given the test results, R, that were obtained? Further, we can determine the probability that the disease is present if the test result is positive, and the probability of not having the disease when the result is negative. Let's use the probability scale of 0 to 1 to schematically depict the diagnostic process and illustrate how Bayesian probability is used to determine the probability of disease based on new information provided by a diagnostic test. In this diagram, the diagnostic process consists of three steps. The initial probability of disease based on our initial belief or hypothesis of a particular disease, the pretest probability. The test used to obtain new information and step three, the revised probability based on the new evidence, also termed post-test probability. Using Bayes' theorem, we can calculate post-test probability as a function of the pretest probability and the properties of the test used to elicit the new information. A Bayesian belief network is a model system that takes into account the probabilistic interdependencies of the variables in this three-step process. It relies on Bayes' theorem for calculating the post-test probability. Let's use our previous example of the patient with the swollen leg. If we imagine that we're using a Bayesian network decision support tool, the input from the first step is the clinical sign, the swollen leg, which in this case is estimated to have a 50% probability of being caused by a blood clot. Based on this information and the results of an angiogram, our test, the post-test probability of a blood clot calculated using Bayes' theorem is 85%. Thus, our initial probability of a particular disease was revised upward from 50% to 85% based on the results of the angiogram, substantially increasing our certainty of this diagnosis. To understand further how this result was obtained, however, we need to better understand the probabilities that underlie steps one and two and how they affect the revised probability in step three. Let's start with step one. Pretest probability, also called prior probability, corresponds to the prevalence of disease in a population. It is the initial judgment, hypothesis, or estimated probability about the likelihood of disease based on those initial clues provided in the history and physical examination and before obtaining other information. When we think of disease prevalence in an individual patient, we are considering disease prevalence in the population of patients with similar clinical findings. Estimates of prevalence can be subjective or objective. Most estimates of prevalence are subjective and are based on personal experience. For example, a physician who examines a patient with jaundice will remember other patients they have seen with jaundice and what their most common diagnoses were. Although relied on often, subjective estimates are prone to bias. Some examples of bias in the way humans tend to estimate prevalence include confirmation bias, in which we tend to interpret patient information in such a way that it supports our preconceptions of what disease is present, attentional bias, in which we tend to ignore information that, while relevant, either we don't understand or doesn't fit our expectations, and availability bias, in which we tend to remember recent or dramatic memories more readily than other memories. Published prevalence estimates are more accurate than subjective estimates, but are not available for all diseases and populations. Published estimates can be found in journal articles and textbooks and are of variable accuracy and levels of evidence. Even in well-done studies that establish prevalence for a particular disease, bias can affect the results. Spectrum bias results when the study population doesn't match the population being tested. For example, the presence of mycobacterial infections in African elephants doesn't necessarily reflect the prevalence of the disease in Asian elephants. Prevalence is overestimated in studies performed at teaching hospitals, where many of them occur, since referred patients are more likely to have severe or unusual diseases compared with the general patient population. For example, patients with the symptom of difficult urination referred to a teaching hospital have a higher prevalence of prostatic cancer than patients with difficult urination in the general population, who are more likely to have a simple bladder infection. Attributes of the patient also can be used to obtain objective estimates of prevalence, usually through studies of different patient populations. Patients with some characteristics, such as a history of smoking or alcohol use, are well known to have a higher prevalence of certain diseases, 
Similarly, patients with a particular clinical sign, such as the difficult urination we mentioned earlier, might have a lower prevalence of prostatic cancer than patients with a prostatic nodule. In some studies, clinical subgroups are developed in which the prior probability of disease is then determined. Clinical prediction rules are one way to assign patients to clinical subgroups in which the prevalence of disease is known.